So, uh, as Schengen Fan uh, has stated it at the beginning of this conference, we have to examine the, the differences and, and the similarities in uh, strategies of Latin American countries and Asian countries in terms of development strategy and, and economic growth. So, <laughs> this paper is aimed at uh, looking how similar or different are uh, trade policy and also to uh, examine what could be the consequences of further integration of uh, uh, both regions with uh, taking into account the recent evolutions in uh, regional trade agreements. So we really think that this uh, topic is interesting because uh, first of course because of the gross performance of both regions and so of course we are very uh, tempted by uh, looking if uh, uh, these gross performance are explained by trade policies. Um, and of course, it is really interesting to see that in both regions, we have in the last 20 years uh, uh, structural reforms, and in particular in trade. Uh, we had, for example, uh, we know very well that uh, in, in both regions, we have very protectionist countries 20 years ago. For example, in Latin America, countries like Chile or Argentina with uh, a structural reform and, and a huge liberalization. Uh, third, these regions are very different. And this is really interesting because we will look at what could be the consequences of integration, trade integrations between very different regions. And we will see in particular that one is specialized in uh, primary products and agricultural products, and uh, the other one is specialized in industrial products. So it's, we are used to, to, to look at the consequences of regional trade agreement, but there is this specificity which is really important, and we think that it's a, a, a good point of departure. Uh, of course, regional trade agreements have, uh, are multiplying all over the world, uh, but we have a recent evolution in regional trade agreement, which is really interesting because, from the point of view of this study, because we have, since 2004, a uh, regional trade agreement between developing countries belonging to different continents. And this is new. This is really new, and so uh, we want to see in the example of Asia and Latin America if it has uh, potential consequences. And another specificity of this regional trade agreement, and this is also really interesting, and this is something on which we are uh, focusing during our study, is the fact that these agreements cover trade, but also investment. And more generally, they, they try to cover uh, Singapore issues, that is to say investments, uh, competition policy, and procurement. So uh, it's a specificity that we want to include in our study. And finally, uh, there is a problematic which is really interesting when we look at the consequences of regional tra trade agreements. Uh, this is the problematic of building block versus tumbling block. So it means that we want to see if, if we think that in the long term there will be liberalizations of trade uh, uh, all over the world, uh, we can see if this agreement will favor this long term movement. Or on the contrary, if it is a stumbling block, maybe it will create a resistance to further liberalizations after this agreement. And you can take the, I, I can take an example which is very simple of a uh, regional trade agreement which is a stumbling block. <coughs> it is a preference given by European Union to uh, Tunisia. Uh, it has, uh, uh, Europe has given Tunisia full access in industry and it has created uh, and other specializations of Tunisia, obviously, in the clothing and apparel industry. And if we think that in the long term there will be uh, liberalization in favor of Asian countries, we think that we can think that Tunisia will be really over specialized and will uh, uh, meet uh, uh, problems of contracting this activity, which is really important in this problem. So, the, the logic of building block versus stumbling block is to see if 
In this case, Latin America and Asia, is it a building block? That is to say, uh, does it go in the right directions in terms of specializations of this country? Or on the other side, if it is a stumbling block, that is to say, it will uh, create a point of resistance. So the, the structure of the presentations will be, first, I will try to give a very quick overview of the institutional point of view. Uh, after, I will try to give you some uh, flavor of trade uh, and trade policy uh, in both regions. And then David will present the modeling of a free trade agreement with uh, something which is traditional. We use the, the traditional versions of the Mirage model, but we want also to study the fact that this agreement, this potential agreement, of course, would cover uh, trade and investment as it has been seen in recent uh, regional trade agreements. So from the institutional point of view, uh, there has been a structural reform in these countries, really important move. Um, I don't want to, to go in, in the details, but there has been a proliferation of RTAs worldwide, but uh, in Asia too. Uh, and in Asia, regional trade agreements are mostly driven by Japan and Singapore, but China and India uh, are also key players. If we want to have uh, uh, an overview of all the, the trade agreements in the regions, we have something that can explain it very quickly, so I will not go into the details, but uh, this is what we call the, the noodle bowl. Uh, in terms of Latin America, we have today 91 regional trade agreements currently in effect involving at least one Latin American countries. And the majority is our bilateral agreements. And Chile and Peru are key players in concerning uh, these agreements. If we want to have a, 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 an overview of all these agreements, I think it is less complicated than the previous one. And I don't know what could be the name, maybe spaghetti balls, but I don't think it is adapted to the region. So, um, And between the continents, uh, in fact, uh, the trade and investment relations between the two regions, Latin America and Asia, were very low until 2004. And uh, since 2004, we have some regional trade agreements, bilateral or plurilateral, between Asian and Latin American countries. And in fact, the specificity is the fact that it covers trade and investment. And this is a point really important because we think that there is on this point a dynamic aspect that we have to uh, account for in our modeling in our study of the potential consequences, because trade can favor investment and investment can favor trade. So in terms of trade characteristic, uh, in terms of exports plus imports on GDP, uh, so Asia is more open than uh, uh, Latin America. Uh, if you look at the geographic destinations of exports, well, uh, Asian exports outside the region, uh, no, to the regions, are much more important than in the case of Latin America. Uh, the structure of exports, this is the main feature I would like to emphasize. It is the fact that the structure of exports is mostly uh, industrial in Asia by 85%. While it is less than 50%, the share of industry in exports of Latin America are less than uh, 50%, so it's mostly in the uh, primary and agricultural products. And this is really something which is interesting because it means that we have a complementary pattern of trade. We have calculated in the paper also some intra-industry trade index, and of course it is higher uh, as far as Asia is concerned, because Asia exports more industrial products. And this is uh, products which are comparative advantages for each country. 
So if it is light gray, it means that it is agricultural and fishery and transform agricultural products. Well, when it is dark gray, these are uh, other sectors and in particular industrial sectors. So here you have Asian countries. So it's mostly dark gray. So it means that each country have a comparative advantage in industry. There are some ex ex exceptions, of course. But as far as Latin America is concerned, you have uh, revealed comparative advantage mainly in uh, agriculture and primary products. In terms of rate of protection, uh, so, so you have two periods of time here, 1995 and 1998 and 2005, 2008 in light gray. So you see that the level of protection today is slightly higher on average on the left part of the graph, so it is Asian countries, as compared to uh, Latin American uh, countries. But the main difference also is, comes from the fact that the dispersion is higher. So if you look at the rate of protection uh, in agriculture, it is higher, uh, it is often higher in Asia as compared to, to Latin America. Well, I just want to uh, conclude on uh, the main feature of uh, this descriptive uh, uh, part. We have big economies, so it's really important. We have a complementary pattern of trade. So it means that one region is exporting mainly agricultural products and primary products, the other one industrial products. So it means that in terms of trade integrations, we can have uh, uh, specific effects. The protection is significant with higher dispersions in Asia, and we want to study uh, regional trade agreements that covers uh, trade and investment. Thank you.